What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the April 2024 balance update. So there are quite a few things going on. We've got some buffs happening to the Astral Elves family, to the Challenge Festival 1 costumes and heroes, the Clash of Knights heroes, an adjustment to my man Daroga, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, who knows, um, and some buffs to the April Heroes of the Month. Uh, so the balance update has arrived, and I'm impressed by some of it, but not all of it. So I'm not sure that this is going to be the most impressive balance update we've ever seen, and I'm not sure that this is going to be the kindest ever review that I'm going to do for a balance update, uh, but we're going to have a look at it anyway. So uh, let's get started. So it says this time around around their balancing tool of tool of choice is going to be for passive skills so rather than making major changes to the hero's stats and special skills they are hoping some targeted adjustment or substitution of their passive skills is going to freshen up your heroes and make them worth another look um, that may well be the case for some of the older heroes but certainly i mean some of the newer heroes sorry but certainly not for some of the older heroes they really need what they need is a stat boost. They need some massive stat boost to be able to keep up with these heroes that are being released and with the power creep that we've got going on in the game. Um, so let's see what else happens. So once the word got out that they're tuning up the passives of all sorts of heroes started coming out of the woodwork, uh, the Astral Elves who now can't miss, uh, Wonderland costumes that unlock a whole new passive skill and another new passive for some slow mana heroes from the Clash of Knights. To be fair, that's just because the Clash of Knights Knights event is really not performing and those heroes are not as useful and we're not seeing them as much as that they would want um so yeah clash of knights is always falling pretty far behind but unfortunately that is nothing new um and it says it includes a fix for the opera hero deroga whose passive skill did not match his mana speed um and of course some bumps for previous april heroes of the month on that fact on Daroga, like it just smacks of being awkward the way that he was then released um, with a passive that didn't match his mana speed, as they've said. And then in this portal that we've got today with the costume heroes, they've released Brienne with a 38% heal and when I did the, the video a bit earlier. And now that's been reduced to 35% just a few minutes ago. So what whatever you guys are doing at SG, you cannot make changes to heroes once you release them into the game at least not this quickly you need to wait a little bit you need to give some advance notice uh, but i'm not a huge fan of just coming out of the woodwork like this and doing pretty much whatever they want um, so that has got my goat a little bit um, but anyway let's have a little look at what's going to be happening here so the astral elves passive skill has changed um, so they are going from resisting blind to now resisting poison and that is a big problem. Um, the resistance against blind was excellent because who gives blind as part of their passives? The goblins family. Which heroes are the most prevalent in today's meta? The goblins family. So we already have heroes that resist poison. We have the gargoyles that resist all kinds of poison to start with and then other elements going on. We don't need these astral elves to resist poison. We need them to resist blind because we're facing the goblins heroes. Anyway, that's just my sort of view on that. And it affects all astral elves. Now, they have given them a bit of a buff in, in the fact that all the offensive special skills now always hit their targets. So I'm a fan of that. Um, I think that that really is going to help. It affects um, the following legendary heroes. So Dreadstar, Starwalker, Spark White, Sparklight, and Lemonwood. Um, and Lionstring, who's probably one of my favorite epics at the moment. Um, and then Star Swift, who's also a pretty decent rare. So I'm a fan of that buff, but not a fan of the passive skill change. I'm sorry. Um, Lemonwood, they've seen fit to increase his damage from 350 up to 380. I'm not sure that that's really necessary, to be fair. I think that he hits like a truck as he is. Um, but then maybe it's because they reduce the damage on consecutive hits uh, that they've decided to do that. But I still don't think that he really needs a buff at this point. He's pretty much brand new. He's only been in the game for about like four weeks or less. And then Dreadstar, um, his mana generation buff's been increased from 30% to 35%. And healing reduction has increased from 74 to 85%. Again, it just seems unnecessary. These heroes are really, really good 
you don't need to do buffs right away to get people to summon from these heroes. I know from just reading your guys' comments how excited you are when you get some of these heroes. And I would be super excited to get either of those, Lemonwood or Dreadstar. Um, so anyways, yeah, just not necessary. Challenge Festival 1. Now, this is a good bonus. So the costume bonus has been increased for legendary heroes of the Pirate, Grim Forest, Avalon, Guardian, and Wonderland, Wonderland families. Um, but the old bonus was 17% attack, 17 defense, 30% health, and 5% mana. They've increased it by 3% and 5% on the health bit, but the mana stayed the same. Again, like I said at the beginning, the 3% increase from 17 to 20% it's good and it's nice, but it isn't enough. Uh, these increases need to be more in line with what we're looking at with the Toons family heroes in order to keep these heroes relevant for long enough um, that when you max the hero, if you do pull a new hero from this family, that that's not going to impact them. And I'm not saying that stats are everything, um, but with where we're going in terms of the game and the power creep being what it is, stats definitely do matter a lot. Um, so while I like the increase, I think it should have been higher. Um, the costumes that unlock the passive skill for the legendary Wonderland heroes, this is awesome. Um, so the mindless attack on special skill. So on special skill cast, there's a 50% chance to inflict mindless attack on a random enemy for three turns. And it affects Jabberwock, Queen of Hearts, and White Rabbit. So White Rabbit, who's already a pretty decent hero, can now cast... 50% chance to cast a random random uh, mindless attack on a random enemy for three turns, as can Jabberwock. I don't think that's overpowered at all. I do like that they've included some passes for these old heroes because they've been screaming out for them. Um, but they're still screaming out for more, in my humble opinion. Um, but I really do like that uh, mindless attack on special skill. I think that's awesome. Um, Red Hood has received an increase in her direct damage. And the Fox Minions increased uh, its HP and the heal increase. It's really not going to make that much of a difference to Red Hood. Unfortunately, she's still a terrible hero. And that's going to stay the same even with this increase. Guardian Owl. Direct damage is increased from 280 to 300. Increase per defeated ally. Up to a maximum of 540%. I mean, Guardian Owl is terrible. He just... Yeah, this is not going to change that. Um, same as we just looked at with Red Hood and his increase in damages per dead ally. So there is a sort of minuscule chance that you'll be able to get that damage up if you just allow everybody else on your team to die first. Um, but that's not really how most of us play the game. <laughs> if you're any... Man. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on before I say too much. But Guardian Owl is still terrible. Um, Damon... He's had a stat boost. Again, they're trying to beef up the um, Knights heroes. He's a fantastic hero as he is. Um, he doesn't really need that additional stat boost, if I'm totally honest. Um, but he has received one. Lysenor, she's had a mana on buff received passive. So she gains 5% mana when receiving a buff or positive stack. It's a nice addition. Um, and she is seriously an amazing, amazing reviver. Probably the best in the game. Um, but I don't know why sort of more people aren't more excited about her. But I'm not sure that this passive is going to change people's opinions overnight. I think that, um, you know, if, if you're struggling with a family, then it's obviously something to do with how you've released the heroes. Um, and adding a small passive like this is really not going to change that that much. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. So Winnie. Winnie has received what looks like the biggest buff. Um, so mana on buff received 5% mana when receiving a buff or positive stack. Her stats have been increased and that health boost has been increased. Uh, now remember, she has like an undispellable or unremovable health boost. So I personally think Winnie is an amazing hero. Um, I Again, I just don't think that we've had the Clash of Knights come around in enough times in rotation yet for enough people to have these heroes to be doing these kinds of buffs. Um, but if you do have Winnie, you, you're going to absolutely love this buff because she's freaking amazing. Winnie the Pooh. Um, she's one of my favorite knights, actually, even though she is running at slow speed. Um, and then Daroga, 
you know, they said they weren't going to be increasing uh, special skills in that little blurb that we just read. But if you take a look at this, uh, the heal from the passive skills been decreased from 20% down to 5%. Seems a bit big to me. Um, and the direct damage they've increased. So they've increased the power of his special skill. Um, which again, I'm just saying that's something that you said you weren't going to do, but you've done it. Um, so anyway, um, direct damage increase from 485 to 535. Uh, that can work against him because he's kind of reliant on the fact that he's giving the spreading bleed damage. Um, but I'm not complaining because I've got him. So I feel like that is a bit of a buff. Um, and then the April heroes of the month that we're looking at, um, Aaron, again, his heal over time has been increased. It's not going to make him a really usable hero. Um, Aaron's costume, again, the direct uh, heals increased. That's okay because you can get rid of some sticky fiends uh, going from 43 to 45%, but again, very niche and with certain heroes only. Um, Melosi's direct damage has been increased from 300 to 350%. Now, that is cool. But like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, he doesn't need an increase in his direct damage. He needs an increase in his base stats um, because the skill that Melosi does is already amazing. He's running at the right kind of speed. You do not take Melosi into the battle for the damage that he does. You take him because of his skill. And that is why he needs a boost in his stats. He doesn't have a costume. He's probably not going to get a costume anytime soon. But we want to see a boost in these hero special skills. And we don't want to have to summon costumes to get that boost. Okay. Um, anyway, Frost. Frost's minions HP has been increased. And attack's been increased. Uh, the health and attack for minions has been increased. Again, it's just going to make him a bigger meat shield. And the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So you can chop him down pretty easily. Um, Silvaria has an increase in her direct damage. I do kind of like this one. From 350 to 380, I like the fact that she gives the defense down before the hit. I think that makes her really usable. Um, and the, the But the passive skill, the summon on burn, is so niche that it hardly ever happens. Increasing the HP of the minions that she gets from that uh, forest guardian, which she summons on burn. Again, it's not going to impact the hero as much. With her, the direct damage does count, though. Uh, because of that defense down that she gives before the hit. And then Turgaruk is our last hero that's being increased with a direct damage increasing for 400 to 450. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about Turgaruk as a hero. I've never really rated Turgaruk that highly. I feel like the um, damage increase from his special should be higher. Um, and that would make Turgaruk a really usable hero and you could potentially use him against titans or her against titans as well um but increasing the direct damage is kind of the least of my worries um, <laughs> again as far as turgret's concerned uh the rest of this update is basically just a full list of the specific changes per hero um so i'm not going to go over every single hero in this list it's basically just what we've gone over except for just they're going over the specific heroes showing you their increases and things like that so you guys can have a look over this in your own time um, but in summary i really do like the um, fact that they have increased the stats on the costume bonuses for the heroes i just feel like it's not enough um, i do like as well the mindless attack for the wonderland family heroes which we will probably get to in a moment so for jabberwock um, in his costume for White Rabbit in his costume and for Red Hood. So I'm a fan of those changes as well, not for Guardian Owl. Um, but that is pretty much the only thing that I'm a fan of with regards to this update. I think that we need to be seeing more innovative ways of making these old heroes usable. And if literally if any of you guys are listening to me, I'm not um, affiliated with Small Giant in any way. Um, I'm just a massive fan of this game and I want to make this better for everybody that plays it. Um, so that is the kind of stance that I'm coming from on this. Um, I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts. So please do let me know what you guys think of this update. Um, and also let me know if you think I've got it right. Let me know if you think I've got it wrong. Um, and let's, you know, let's build up a community of people where we can actually say, look, guys, you're not doing this right. Um, and hopefully kind of start to make some kind of change. Um, but that is pretty much everything from me. So I wish you guys all of the best. 
guest. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves, having a lovely evening. Um, and until the next time, I will see you all again in the next video. Bye for now, guys. Thank you.